Hi, I'm Caitlin. Caitlin, nice to meet you. I'm Chris. Chris, nice to meet you. So today we're going to do a little chipping lesson. Great. And uh, before we get started, I'm just going to ask you a couple questions about your golf history, body history. Um, we'll talk about your equipment. Then um, we'll get do some uh, warm-up. Um, I'll have you do a couple physical assessments to test your flexibility. Okay. And then we'll get right into it. Sounds good. Um, so let's just start off. How much golf have you played? What's your golf history? I played golf off and on for about 20 years or so, but you know that's a few times a year, a couple times a year. Okay. So actually, I haven't even touched my clubs in about a year. Okay, so good, great. <laughs> not quite 20 years, okay. really. Okay, <laughs> good. So you you at least have played golf and yeah. you know most of the golf rules. Yep. In terms of um, your physical, um, have you had any injuries or anything like that? I nope. should know about. No injuries. Perfect health. Okay, so. good. How about um, any past sports that you've played that you can maybe correlate those sports into golf? And I played a little basketball okay. in high school. Uh, I play volleyball now, beach volleyball now. Okay, fun. Good, good. Okay, so um, next we're going to do um, a couple physical assessments to just okay. texture flexibility and stuff like that. Sure. Um, one, we're just going to start with touching your toes. Oh, no. So try. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> try and keep your knees as straight as you can, and then we'll see. All right, good. Oh. That's okay. And then um, next one we're going to do, we're going to test uh, your shoulders. So I want you to go like this and see how far back you can go. And so what I'm testing here is that you can go, yep, good, good, that's pretty good. Past 90. Uh-huh, past 90, so that's good. And down, okay, good. And then um, I just want to see your wrist, so go like this and go down. And so I just want to see how far you can go, good. And then go up, good. And then we're gonna go like this, and I wanna see with your elbows tight right here. Okay. If you can go to 90, and so you can make a full 180. Very good. <clears throat> okay, now we're gonna do, um, I'm gonna test your, your kind of your back and everything. Okay. Um, so I want you to hold the club <clears throat> like this, okay. okay? And uh, we're just gonna bend a little bit at the waist. Yep, in a perfect shoulder width stance. And um, I want you to keep your hips still, but I want you to turn just your shoulders. Got it. Okay, so as far as you can. Very good. Then go the other way. Very good. So what that's showing me is that you can um, separate the hips from the shoulders and that you have mobility in turning just your hips. Okay, okay and then um, we'll do this again. And I just want you to turn. So, so you can stand pretty much straight up. And I just want you to turn. Uh-huh, good, very good. And turn again, very good. Okay, and then, um, let's see, do we have a chair? Um, we actually, we won't do that one. Okay, so now we're gonna just do a couple warm-ups. Sure. Um, so we'll do, you can hold this like this, and we're gonna do a swinging leg, okay? Got just it. forward and back. Do maybe eight reps, each of those. Lower body loose. The hip warmed up. Yep, get the hips warmed up. Do both sides. <clears throat> After you've done about eight of those, we're gonna now go across your body. Okay. Do eight each. And you'll notice here one side might be tighter or tougher. <laughs> to do than the other, yeah. so that's good to note what side that is, so that could affect your, your golf swing in general. Yeah, that's true, I know. Your mobility, yeah, one side should be tighter than the other. Yeah. Do you know what side that is? It seemed like this side was tighter. Okay, good, okay, and then um, we're gonna do some um, shoulder okay. circles. We'll go forward, do eight forward. Okay, how are you feeling? Good. Getting, getting loose? Loose, yeah, warmed up. Okay, good. Starting to break a sweat. Okay. <laughs> okay, awesome. Okay, so now that now that we're warmed up, um, let's get into your equipment. Okay. So it's really important that um, you know you have equipment that is fitted to you because um, it can definitely change how the ball reacts in your golf swing depending on how you hit the ball 
-hmm. your height and, and all that stuff. It's very important. So these clubs, um, were, were these fitted for you? No, or? these were some uh, some used clubs okay. uh, my brother picked up for me. So um, don't know how old they are, but uh, I've had them for, I don't know, 10 years now. Okay. They were used that's, before that. so <laughs> That's okay. That's they're very okay. old. Um, so uh, grips, you have, it feels like you have some pretty thick grips on these. Yeah, my brother actually put some uh, tape underneath before he put the grips on. Just kind of give it a, a, a thicker grip. So. Okay, good. Uh, whatever's more feels comfortable. comfortable. Yeah, whatever's more comfortable for you. Okay, so um, when you, you know, when you have more lessons in the more you practice, um, your clubs are going to, they do need to be fitted for you just sure. uh -huh, based on your swing. And so that is something you maybe want to take into account once you start playing more, you know, maybe get some clubs that are probably properly fitted to you, or they could be already um, fitted to you, we just don't know, and we'll uh, yeah. figure that out. Uh, probably not today, because we're just doing chipping, but okay. when you do a full swing uh, <coughs> lesson, we'll probably figure that out more. All right. Um, so today, we're gonna, we're gonna do some basic chipping, and um, have you ever had a chipping lesson? Or? I have not, no. Okay, so great, so, so that's good. Um, so we'll start with, is there anything you'd like to achieve out here? It could be very simple, very. You it's just know, nice just to uh, have some consistency. Okay, right? some consistency. Getting them on the green within, you know, whatever, silver, several feet of the hole, you know? Okay. Do you notice anything like when you're chipping, like there's a certain shot that you, you kind of tend to miss or you have a tendency of doing a certain shot when you're chipping? Like no, it's just short, all, over the, place. all over the place. They're off the hosel, they're thin, they're fat, they're long, they're short, they're, you know, it's okay. just not consistent. Okay, so consistency. Okay, so we want to get some cons consistency. So um, we do definitely want to be able to measure that somehow, whether we're getting more consistent or not. So we'll start with a certain pin and we'll see kind of what shot you're hitting. We'll check your setup and uh, just everything general with your setup, your motion and it, your motion and uh, non-motion um, setup. And then we'll see what type of shots you're hitting. And then maybe we'll make a couple tweaks and we'll be able to measure okay. um, you know, consistency on some level, whether that's being Sure, too far, we'll, we'll get a, a better idea of Great. that. Great, all right, sounds good. So let's start, so this shot right here, it's very important in chipping um, that you, and in all shots, that you take into consideration um, your lie. And it's very, very important in chipping um, because there's such you know little acute shots and you're trying to hit them very accurately. So this, you're on an uphill slope um, so most, let's say we're going to this first pin, um, what, what would you like to, to hit here? If you were to hit this shot without me, hit it, me standing here, what would be the club that you gravitate Not towards? much green, so probably sand wedge, maybe pitching wedge, but I think I'd probably start with the sand Okay, wedge. good. Don't need much roll. That's a good, good selection. So uh, first I just want to check your, your grip, and uh, we are not going to hit a ball yet, but just your, your general grip. And, set up and then I'll just see you you know maybe take just a couple to get loose and then tell me when you're you're ready and you're feeling good I'm ready feeling good all right okay so yeah let me let's uh we'll address the ball and when I say address the ball that means what your uh your setup that would it would be right before you're gonna hit the ball okay perfect all right yeah let me see you let me see you hit one okay That's okay. A little fat, I think, there. That's okay. Let's just hit a couple. Get comfortable. There you go. That was pretty good. That felt good. Good. Let's see. Two more. to eight feet okay so you're right the consistency we need to yeah. at least we have two short we have two long so two fat and two are <laughs> decent i yeah. guess so um one thing i have noticed let's get into your setup setup is so crucial right. um it really is what everything is derived off of so 
with this shot, um, again, the lie, it's an uphill lie. So what that does, I'm going to show you, um, if you want to stand right sure. here. <clears throat> so when you have a slope that is going up like this, okay, an, an upward slope, what happens is most people, they want to try to fight gravity when they're, when they're playing golf. So what, um, and you know, in terms of balance, you know, you're trying to fight the hill. So if the hill is sloped like this, most people, you know, they want to stand straight up. And so they're fighting the hill because the hill's like this and they're, they want to stand straight up. In golf though, the clubs are designed to be, when you hit the golf ball, that it's, um, it's level, right? So if you have a certain, if you have, this is the ground, and the club is designed to hit the golf ball like this, once you've changed the, the slope of the hill, your surface that you're hitting on, now it has changed um, how the golf club is supposed to hit the golf ball okay. on the ground. So what you want to do is you want to, you want to work with the slope, okay? So if we're on a slope that's like this, we need to change our shoulder level, okay? So if our shoulders are like this, and we want to be straight up and down, but the slope is like this, we need to change our shoulder level to be parallel with the ground. So now how the club was designed to be, to be hitting the golf ball is, is accurate, okay? Makes sense. So what I noticed with you a little bit, which can cause some inconsistency, is that you're trying to fight the ground, okay? And it can cause some of those chunks because you're hitting into the ground, okay? We want to level our shoulders so they go with the slope of the ground and then the club is designed to hit how um, it, it's supposed to, okay? It keeps the same, the same loft. So what I want to see now is that your shoulders are level with the ground and we'll start from there. So let's... Okay. Give that a try. <laughs> Yeah. Yep, looks good. See, it was a little bit more truer of a hit. You didn't yeah. chunk it. Yeah. But so now what we're finding is that, you know, maybe that's not the right club because you're comfortable with that speed of, of a stroke and how hard you hit it. So in a shot like that, now you've hit three short like that. Maybe that's not the right club. Maybe the pitching, okay? wedge. Maybe the pitching wedge is going to allow you to use that same stroke rather than giving it an extra rather than trying to hit it harder right. you know and manipulate it we just want to do what works best with what you're comfortable with so there we, go. we love that shot that shot works all day long even though you might have not hit it completely clean in general because you don't have as much loft it's a much easier shot to hit. We want to always try to keep the ball as low to the ground as possible. Sure. And you did a great job there. That's one foot. So let's hit another one. Uh, a little short. So okay. even you didn't hit that one good. If it didn't hit that ball, it still would have probably been about five feet. Get some good roll. So now, yeah, right now we're seeing a little more consistency, even though you're not hitting it, you know, perfect every single time. So this, you know, might be a better club selection yeah. um, in terms of when we're picking picking our clubs for hitting certain shots. Beautiful. You know that one a little past. Little we're still they're they're getting in tighter. Okay, we're yeah. we're seeing them closer. So I've noticed a little bit with your grip. Um, let me see your grip again. Yeah, he's the old ten finger kids grip. Yeah, so I noticed you you've uh, used ten finger. Have you've always been like that? Yeah, I've tried the interlock or the overlap, but it never Just feels comfortable. That's okay. Yeah, yeah we want to do what's comfortable for you. Um, and again, with those bigger grips, that might be a reason as to why it's uncomfortable for you, because the bigger the grip, sure. the the fingers have to spread out more, and then it might be tougher for you to interlock because it's it's really uncomfortable. It's probably true. And you don't have as much leverage, so that could be something. Um, that not, not that anything's wrong with ten finger, but you do want the hands really working together. And when they're when they're separate like this, it's tougher for them to work together in one unit. Right. So that's why you know overlap like this or interlock is usually something I'd recommend. But I mean, you're, that's what you're comfortable with, and it could be because of the grips. That's something that we want to 
want to stay focused on. So this has been um, a good a good chip shot that we've hit right here. Now let's maybe go to the second flag. Middle flag, okay. So what would you, if you're gonna hit that shot, what would you maybe? I'd probably go to a nine. A nine, all right, roll out good. Of it. We're learning here. <laughs> this, I, I know what I'm talking about. Let's <laughs> see if I can do it. It's an eight iron, nine iron. So just like in um, full swing, setup, you know, is very important. So now that we're, um, it's a little bit further of a distance in terms of ball position, um, meaning when you set up, let's have you set up. So ball position with this uphill slope, you know, that can, where the ball is placed in your feet um, can have a huge, um, change a lot depending on the slope and whatever so if you move the ball up in your stance okay do you know what up in your stance does to the ball flight uh it should loft it up in uh -huh, the air a little right, bit, right right it should loft it up a little bit so because we're using a nine iron and maybe you're like oh i'm worried it's gonna run out so much maybe we want to try and put it in um more towards the more middle left foot left okay foot. more towards up up in your stance and let's just play with that and see what it does. Now that you have a lower lofted club, we have to go a little further. Okay. Oh, oh that's okay. Chunked it. That's okay. There you go. That's great. We like that, about four yeah. or five feet. Work with that. Definitely, yeah, we definitely can work with that. Let's hit another one. So now let's let's play around and see the difference. We put that one up in the stance. Let's maybe put one in the back of your stance, so closer to the, the back foot, the right foot, and see what type of trajectory happens when we do that. So a little lower, lower yeah. a little more piercing of a, of a ball flight. It came out a little hotter. Mm -hmm. So it just depends, you know, when you're when you're hitting uphill, what you want to accomplish, whether you want to carry it further and have it land softer. So that would be more towards the front foot. And then if you want it to really roll out um, and, and be lower, that maybe towards the back foot. Okay. So, um, I mean, either one of those turned out really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, you as a player are just going to have to decide, you know, what which ball flight you like better, what you're more comfortable with. Um, Play with different, uh -huh. what you're comfortable with. And, and definitely take into account when you're on fast greens or slow greens, when you're on slow greens, maybe you want that lower piercing ball flight that rolls out and sure. these are pretty quick so that that high loftier soft shot works works really well towards the front of your foot so we'll hit a couple more of those and then maybe go jump in the bunker They're a little long that's okay you say back flag <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right, so this one we'll do, uh, where do you want to place this one in your stance, just so we can... Just put it, uh, we'll put it in the middle. Middle, okay, let's do middle. <clears throat> there we go. Good, really good. So do you feel you're, you're a little bit more consistent with maybe... Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. those three right yeah, there look pretty are, good, right? those are awesome. Is there anything you feel like that you didn't know before that you've taken in these last few minutes that has helped you? I think considering the slope, you know, I've always kind of, you know, you've always put a, what chips you put your weight forward, right? Uh -huh. but, but I understand what you're saying about kind of leveling out your body to get that the face angle, right? You don't want to shut the face exactly. down, Exactly. Right? Uh-huh. Be fighting the hill and then hitting into the yeah. hill. Yeah. Does that good. make sense? Good, good. Okay, let's go over to the bunker. Let's hit a couple in the bunker. All right. The so sandwich. The bunker, yeah. Let's maybe grab your sand wedge. Um, some people use lob wedge. Some people... Um, even use less just depending on, on the, the shot they want to hit. So bunker is one of those shots where you have to take a little bit different of an approach. Okay? Um, <clears throat> to, to how you chip. Um, when you chip with, with your setup, usually just, just regular chipping, it's much like the, the large golf swing where you know your feet 
are, are parallel to your target and your shoulders are parallel to your target and you're pretty much aimed and your alignment is directly at where you want to land the ball. In the bunker, it's a little bit different because of how you want to hit the golf ball. So if you don't mind, I'm going to take your club and just show you really quick. Maybe stand right here face on so you can see what, what's going on. So if we want to go to this middle pin right here, a normal, a normal golf shot, you would set up, you know, dead square to it. The club would sit just like this. So the reason we don't set up like that in a bunker is because in a normal golf shot, you want to take a divot, right? right. Um, for the most part, you, you <clears throat> want to take a divot, you want to hit ball and then hit take divot. And that's that's how you hit a, hit a, a regular golf shot. In the bunker, we are trying to hit the sand first, okay? We're not trying to hit the ball first. And to do that, to make sure that you don't chunk and dig into the sand and you don't hit you know the shot you want to hit you have to approach it a little bit different so in a normal golf shot you're you're hitting you know on the club face and you're hitting down on the ball with a bunker shot we want to use the the um, sole of the club okay and we're utilizing the bounce to get the ball in the air and for the sand to push the ball out of the bunker so when we set up for a bunker shot the leading edge, okay, this part right here, we want to be perpendicular to our to our target, okay? And you can't, you can no longer sit up, set up like this. You need to set up more like this, where you're gonna play the bounce, okay? Uh -huh. That's what's gonna go under, under the sand, okay? Now with that, see how it's changed the angle of my shaft? Right. Okay, I was like this for a normal golf shot. Now I'm like this so I can utilize the bounce I no, I no longer could stay square to my target or else I'd have to set up like this, okay? So what I now need to do is I need to set up, set up the face where it's supposed to go and then set up to where it's comfortable for, for my body to hold the golf club based on where the club should be, okay? So an open stance? So what's gonna happen is now instead of being square like this, <clears throat> My whole body comes back this way to be more comfortable. Okay. The ball position has now moved to forward in my stance, mm -hmm. and my whole body now has is opened up, okay? Got it. My feet are open to the target, meaning left. My shoulders are open to the target. And so now I'm going to be swinging more on this path outside in, okay, to get the ball over there. So I'm going to hit one for you so you can see how it looks. So now the ball position's up. I'm aimed a little more left. My shoulders are left. And I'm just gonna try to hit about an inch behind the ball and get the get the ball out of the sand like that. Okay. Hit one more, that was fat. So we're intentionally hitting it fat. So we're, we're kind of intentionally hitting it fat. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. So again, I'm gonna hit about an inch behind the ball. My whole body's gonna move to the left. different from your usual chip shot. Let's have you hit a few. Alrighty. Do you have any questions? No, let me, uh, let me get set up and get into it and I'll see yeah. how it feels. Alright. So open the face a little. Yep. So, good. Good. Looks Forward really good. Exactly, open. exactly. So, you know, we just want to hit, dig about an inch behind the ball. Got it. Kind of a full swing, right? Keep yeah, let's hit. Around. Yeah, let's hit a full swing. Let's just try it out. Let's hit a full swing. Oh, so good. That was beautiful. There you go. Right? <laughs> Done. Less than over. Less than over. <laughs> we'll see if I can do that again. <laughs> but that that was perfect. That was great tempo. Um, you know, see how feel how different it is. Yeah. You're kind of cutting across it from from outside in. Your body's left. That was so good. Do the same thing. All right, that's okay. So a little, that one just was a little close to the hosel, you know, yeah, which is yeah. this Up part of the club. Yep. So it kind of just shanked a little bit. Yep. Yep. That's okay. Let's hit another one. <clears throat> Very good though. Good tempo. This thing looks really good. Oh, so good. Easy. 
better than my chipping. Is there any? Is there any <laughs> shot? Yeah, that was that was those are amazing. Is there anything? Um, you know, so we want to get to consistency. That's what our goal is today. Yep. Um, is there anything that you in the bunker you would like to get more consistent with? Or is it just getting out of the bunker? What is kind of your goal? You know, usually I'm not a very good bunker player. It's just a miracle that I get out. Okay. Um, but I don't know, I did pretty good. And maybe <laughs> good. it was uh, just good, a quick good. little tip. Yeah. Um, it seems very simple though, just sliding the club underneath the open face, right? Good. Forward position, open stance. Good. Um, yeah, probably in the past I was probably trying to hit it like a regular shot. Right. Yeah, that might have been my problem right. before. Um, so, I mean, th those were great. I would like to, you know, let you walk away with a couple of drills for that. Okay. And so, um, the setup is crucial with the bunker shot. Right. Setup is crucial with every shot, but really with bunker shot because it's so abstract and different from a regular golf shot. So when you're in the bunker and you're you're working on your bunker game, just really make sure that your setup is you know your your left, the club face is aimed at a aimed at your target because sometimes you just wanna you just wanna oh I'm just gonna open it open it up. Yeah. But then what happens? Now you're aimed way to the right, okay? So yeah. it's very important that if this is your, your target line, that the club, that you're not just, oh, I'm gonna open it up, but now I'm aimed way right. Make sure that the leading edge is perpendicular to your target and you move your body back, okay? Sure, sure. That's really gonna help you with <clears throat> where where your alignment for one. Okay. Um, so when, you, when you're practicing that, really make sure. And then um, drills for when you are just regular chipping, just really be aware of the lie of the grass and um, maybe what club you're hitting. I know you want to, everybody wants to go straight to the sandwich. And so, <laughs> um, you know, don't be afraid to try the, the nine iron and the eight iron. Um, they roll out, you can miss a little bit and you're gonna have a better outcome. And so, yeah, those would just be some uh, really, really uh, test your, your ch decision making with your, your club selection versus, oh, I'm gonna try and change my golf swing, you know, to, to hit it further or, um, you have a, a great stroke and your setup is good in general. So really it's probably just club selection um, that you need to work on. Okay. But besides that, you did really good today. Great. Well, thanks and a lot. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yep, have a good one. Great, thanks. You too.